Wachowski's movies have been blowing minds for generations. Your life is either defined by the system or by the way you defy the system. The Wachowski's transformations and openness about the process excites millions of people in the same way. Ta-da! People ask me if I'm happy, but you know, happiness, it's not a finish line that you cross. How did the iconic directors, who shunned journalists for a decade, have given the world years of future debates over the ideas hidden in their masterpieces? This complicity in a binary gender narrative that I am not particularly comfortable with. Why did Lana Wachowski decide to shoot the fourth part of The Matrix all by herself? Is the era of the Wachowski sisters over? This could take the whole hour. <laughs> Are you sure you want to ask this question? Oh yes, we're sure. We're going to make it in a few minutes. The Wachowskis, the legendary duo, their names are forever written into the history of cinema. Lana and Lily enjoy their fame and are proud to finally be themselves. This is how a brilliant couple of creators were presented at the beginning of their Hollywood journey in 1999, on the set of the first Matrix movie, Two Bodies, One Brain. This was the name given to these newcomers in the film industry. They were constantly picking up on each other's ideas. Larry and Andy dropped out of college at the same time and started to build and paint houses as their main occupation. In their spare time, they occasionally wrote comics, creating original stories and scripts without much hope for them to be published. However, their script of Assassins got noticed by an experienced producer, Dino De Laurentiis. He actually bought the script in 1994 for $25,000, introducing the Wachowskis into the industry the hard way. Two weeks later, there was this huge article in Variety that Dino De Laurentiis sold assassins to Warner Brothers for $2.5 million. <laughs> we were like, welcome to Hollywood. It didn't break Wachowski's spirit, and they offered Dino one more script, a thriller bound with two lesbians as main characters. Without hesitation, Dino gave them the green light to make the movie, and they added another one in the contract, The Matrix. They agree on everything. The Wachowskis Bound isn't widely remembered now, but it was this movie in which the directors first dropped a hint about one of the main topics of their work in general. Desperate search for oneself. Just three little words. I want out. The Wachowskis then explained the scene of a tied up woman in a closet in the most straightforward way. It's about the boxes people make of their lives as well, and we wanted actually to be able to see that stuff. We think that not only gay people or queer people live in closets, everybody does. We all tend to put ourselves into these boxes, these traps, get out of the closet. It took Larry more than 30 years to realize he was trapped, then another 12 years to come out of the closet to face the public. It took Andy even longer. At the end of the 90s, they are. Just like real guys. And there's none of that, that kind of Hollywood thing is not evident at all. You know, they're from Chicago, you know? They wear shorts, they wear baseball hats, they, they watch basketball games, they love movies. Their father was a crafty Polish businessman, and their mother loved painting, and she was even into shamanism. The atmosphere at home was generally filled with creativity. From the very start of their childhood, the brothers created entire fantasy worlds, and they finally managed to bring them to life. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. On the set of the first Matrix, no one had a clue that the happily married Larry was actually suffering from depression. He first realized he couldn't conform to the traditional society when he was just a child. On the first day of his Catholic school, the children were asked to divide into groups of boys and girls, but he couldn't choose which side to be on. Let's do that. Okay. They never had any doubts on the set though. The Wachowski spent five months perfecting each frame of the Matrix in order to convince the production company and the team that it was in fact possible to bring the script to life. In the end, they even created a revolutionary motion picture that made every viewer, even just for a brief moment, consider how the outside world might just be a simulation. We're in.
The Matrix won four technical Oscars and 28 various movie critic awards. The millennium was marked with the world going crazy, trying to unravel the Wachowskis' philosophical ideas and hidden messages. At the time, the brothers joked that they preferred to refuse all interviews, and they might even add that as a condition to the contract. Later, they actually delivered an ultimatum. Either they would continue to work without having to do interviews, or they wouldn't work on the movies at all. We'll let you know. To be continued. The end. <laughs> The second and third parts of The Matrix were shot in Australia, where the Wachowskis' radical ideas were cheaper and easier to implement. It was where the rumors first appeared. Larry was preparing for a gender transition. Only in 2012, Lana Wachowski told us the story of how, with the help of her family's support, she gained the courage to do it. I meet a woman, the first person that has made me understand that they love me not in spite of my difference, but because of it. She refers to Karen Winslow. She was a dominatrix under the name Ilsa Strix and the owner of a BDSM club in Chicago. She flew to Larry and Sydney during the shooting of the movie trilogy. As he later confessed to his brother Andy, that woman saved him from the daily ritual of swimming in the ocean with the hope that one day a shark would kill him. In 2003, at the premiere of the third Matrix, it was Karen, that stunning blonde woman who Larry appeared on the red carpet with. At that moment, the tabloids were busy vigorously guessing when the elder Wachowski would be able to obtain his share of the huge earnings from the trilogy released. His wife, Thea Bloom, had frozen all of his accounts as she had filed for divorce after nine years of marriage. Larry has been extremely dishonest with me in our personal life, and I believe he is hiding information from me regarding our financial affairs. Tia then claimed, Larry survived the divorce without any comments and moved in with his beloved Karen, and they are still happily married to this day. The Wachowskis soon presented us with another one of their amazing cinema creations, which thrilled all movie lovers. They wrote and produced V for Vendetta. It gave the world another striking image to remember, the white anonymous mask of Guy Fox. Hackers, anti-capitalists, and just about everyone who's against anything began to use it as their symbol. Later, the Wachowskis gave the world an even better subject for discussions with their new creation, Cloud Atlas. Almost three hours of intricate plots and characters interlaced with a budget of more than $100 million. In order to obtain the required budget, the Wachowskis had to mortgage their own houses. The public were skeptical about the idea of soul reincarnation and all-conquering love. The most expensive independent movie of that time totally failed at the box office. Even so, it was still widely discussed all over the world. Even though Larry Wachowski changed his name to Lana on all the social media platforms back in 2006, the Cloud Atlas promotional tour was the first time she gave comments and came out in her new look. Hi, I'm Lana. I'm Tom. I'm Andy. After a dozen years of playing hide-and-seek with journalists, the 47-year-old director made a stunning appearance at the movie's premiere in 2012. She was beautifully dressed, wore pink dreadlocks, and held her brother's arm. She felt safe with him, as if she was behind a stone wall. After all, Andy once said that he would not hesitate to throw a bottle at anyone who tries to hurt his sister. Lana received the Visibility Award, and her half-hour speech of the Human Rights Campaign was an absolute tabloid hit. She explained that it was not the transition that made her hide from the press, but the strife for a private life. She then spoke out after all the years of silence, quoting her favorite character from Cloud Atlas. If I had remained invisible, the truth would stay hidden and I couldn't allow that. Lana recalled the childhood trauma with the boys and girls back at school. I feel a feeling of differentiation that confuses me. She recalled how her mother just happened to be passing by at that moment and saved her from the wrath of the nun. At home, she tried to ask little Larry what had happened there. But I have no real language to describe it. She tells me to look at her, but I don't want to because when I do, I'm unable to understand why she can't see me. Finding no explanation for his feelings at the time, Larry had tried to commit suicide as a teenager. Many years later, he invited his mother for an important conversation in Sydney whilst they were shooting The Matrix. During that conversation, he admitted that he didn't feel like he was a man. With her mother's full acceptance, Lana's long journey to her real self began. Having good parents is just like the lottery. 
Lily was not as lucky when she came out as transgender as she was subjected to an outing. The first suspicions that Andy was on his way to transition appeared just a few years later. During the Jupiter Ascending promotional tour, Andy's change of style was even more drastic. Rumors said that he was already going through hormonal therapy, but the directors only commented on the ideas mentioned in their new movie. Every human society is a pyramid, and some lives matter more than others. In 2016, 48-year-old Andy announced his gender reassignment and his new name, Lily. Journalist pressure forced him to come out. One of the reporters even showed up on Andy's doorstep with an ultimatum. Either do an exclusive interview now, or they would publish a really nasty article. Lily came out in a statement to Windy City Times with an ironic headline, Sex Change Shocker, Wachowski Brothers, Now Sisters. Ta-da! <laughs> Lily explained she was silent because she needed some time after the gender reassignment surgery to feel comfortable in her new body. As she was forced to come out, she actually had a lot to say to the world. I am one of the lucky ones. Having the support of my family and the means to afford doctors and therapists has given me the chance to actually survive the process. Transgender people without support, means and privilege do not have this luxury and many do not survive. Lily appeared in public and conquered everyone with her straightforwardness. How does it feel to be here? Uh, well, I, I haven't puked yet, so <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I, people ask me if I'm happy, but you, you know, happiness, it's not a finish line that you cross in your life. I'm speaking my truth and I'm living my truth and that's important uh, for everybody to be able to do that. Lily couldn't hide the fact that her transition was inspired by her sister Lana. She'd hated her body for many years, but now she was grateful to her family and Alice Blassingame, her wife of over 30 years, for their complete acceptance. There's a critical eye being cast back on Lana's and my work through the lens of our transness. This is a cool thing because uh, it's an excellent reminder that art is never static. Uh, and while the ideas of identity and transformation are critical components in our work, the bedrock that all ideas rest upon is love. The Wachowski sisters embody their entire philosophy in a notable and very explicit TV series, Sense8. It had a successful two-season run on Netflix since 2015. It was something that I wanted when I was a kid to see uh, sexuality and gender and human connectivity without all of the prejudices and biases and that the love and connection and intimacy and sex is available to everyone. And I had never seen that and it was like, it was joyful to shoot. The Wachowski shot this fantasy drama about the unity of souls and the diversity of love and sexuality in one of the most beautiful corners of the planet. Inherent to the Wachowski's grand scale, each episode cost a production company the cosmic sum of $9 million. After comparing the expenses with the ratings, Netflix closed the show. By that time, the series had obtained a huge world fan community, which flooded the company with petitions to return Sense8 to the screens. Netflix finally gave in. An additional episode was released in 2018. Lana was very grateful to the big family of supporters in her open letter. I could kiss every single one of you. After that, if this experience has taught me anything, you never know. After Sense8, Lily enrolled in an art school. In 2019, she announced she was in a relationship with a transgendered man, art school professor named Mickey Ray Mahoney. Lana surprised the public even more. She announced the fourth part of The Matrix. Yes, for 20 years, the Wachowskis swore that the story was over, but Lana changed her mind and decided to make a new movie on her own. After all these years, to be going back to where it all started, back to The Matrix. It had to do with the sister's parents' death, which had struck them in different ways. I didn't really know how to process that kind of grief. One night I was just crying and I couldn't sleep and suddenly my brain just exploded this whole story. Lana realized she couldn't bring her parents back to life, but she could bring back Neo and Trinity. The loyal fans of the Matrix universe were initially outraged, but Lana Wachowski knows that everything is possible in movies. You can look at it and say, ah oh, yeah, okay, these two people die, and okay, bring these two people back to life, and oh, doesn't that feel good? Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's simple, and this is what 
art does, and this is what stories do. Lana suggested that she and her sister could shoot the story together, but Lily refused. She wanted to process her grief differently. Lana gained her wives and friends' support, as well as her old teens. The return of Neo and Trinity was perceived as the Wachowskis' parody of themselves by many people. Others believe that the director decided to explain her philosophy to a new generation in a language they can understand. Whatever the criticism she has yet to face, Lana enjoys the attention of the public and is finally playing around with journalists on the red carpet. First, let me just say, you look sensational. The texture is really working for me. Black on black on black. Still, the world is used to seeing both of the Wachowskis together. Now we have to wait for Lily to appear at their next premiere with her sister. Do you think the era of the Wachowskis is to be continued? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like our video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click on the bell.